Hello, I'm going to vibe with you for a few minutes here. It is Wednesday evening, 20, no, <laughs> see, I got to check. Days can blend into one another. It's Thursday the 23rd. And um, a couple things um, prompt me to try to make a video and we'll see how it goes. An old friend of mine stopped by today who I haven't visited with for quite a while. We have some great um, history when it comes to music and concerts and just all kinds of stuff. We had a great conversation about all kinds of stuff and music is one of the things and um, was he was someone I used to um, kind of, um, not kind of, but we shared music and we would buy together, at, you know what I'm saying. And I was talking about how um, it's different now and I don't feel compelled or need to buy or, you know, really, uh, I don't feel that. It is kind of a, com a com compulsion where it's like, you know, I need some new vinyl, I need to go. And it's like, we do like it. So interestingly enough, I hadn't gone out and done any digging in a while. And almost as a result of saying I haven't, my monitor is acting strange. For a couple reasons I decided to go to Recycled Sounds, a particular record store today run by a friend Stuart. And um, because today is Stuart's birthday and I thought to myself, well I'll do a two-pronged thing here. I'll celebrate um, getting paid for uh, finishing the dance commission which I just received and I will um, celebrate Stuart's birthday by giving him some business. Um, and we'll both be, be happy. And he had some things that um, appealed to me. Interestingly, as I was looking through the store and looking at stuff and some of the new, new releases or more recent stuff, it's like, you know, it's like, especially with the way the prices are now, it's like, you know, I'm not even that tempted. He had some older stuff that I ended up getting and um, I want to talk about that because not listening like I used to, but okay, so I, I picked up four albums from him today and uh, all of them I've been, been wanting, one I used to own. Going back to the, um, my, 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 my teen years, the 60s and 70s, here's one from the East Coast been wanting this forever. Chrysalis is the name of the band. Chrysalis. And um, this is a good album. It's a cool mixture of rock, a bit of psychedelia, and the other thing that comes to mind when I listen to this band is like these guys probably are um, school trained or classically trained. They have chops and they have interesting ideas. I also like the gatefold and to, someone must have thought that they had potential because that's a textured gatefold. I don't know what kind of paper that is, but it's very nice and you know, was, it wasn't cheap as you can see. You can see it was a special deal. So I picked this up and um, I've had it forever on download, of course, so I know the songs. A lot of the songs are sung by a female singer. One of the cats in the band went on. Let me not make, make sure I don't mix it up with this other band. Oh, I am mixing it up. Okay. Because I always look to see if these people have gone on to play on other records. And I think some of them have. So this is one I picked up today. Really happy to grab this. The other thing I wanted to say about listening to old music like this now. It's not, it's not like anymore this old music is like just what I really want to hear, there is um, an element of nostalgia um, when I listen to it. And there's also um, definitely an element of, oh, now I finally, finally I get, I get to have a copy of this. That may sound a little odd, but uh, that's still going on a bit with some of these old records. Because I remember these when I was a teen and I, you know, I had no money and I, well, and that's what I would do is I would just window shop and I'd go through all the records and just look at them all. Fascinated, fascinated. So I got that. 
another along those same lines. I was just looking this up, but I forgot to look at the date. This is probably 68-69, Mandrake Memorial. I'm going to look this up right quick and see the date on this. I was just looking at this up. Um, I've seen this online recently where some other, or at least one other person I know in the VC found a copy of this in 1968, not that long ago. And this is listed as psychedelic rock, and technically, when you put it with the times, I can see why it did. But actually, this is kind of a more of a soft, soft rock kind of sound, and um, it seems to me, in many ways, these some of these songs are really um, um, focused on trying to get girls. <laughs> which is always mixed in the music, but it's like, that's what I was noticing as I listened to this. And I've had it for a while on CD, Burn, but I always forget what it sounds like. So as I'm listening to it play, which is different to listen to, and it's an original on Poppy, it's in good shape. It was like I was remarking to myself, this, this is not very psychedelic, this is very melodic. Um, the singing, singing is almost crooning, you know, like you can tell, he's like, I'm going for the girls. This band has a, a musician or two of note. Craig Anderton, the guitarist, plays sitar, since then has made some um, what you call New Age records. Craig Anderton, and he's also played with uh, another musician who I have, at least one of her albums, Linda Cohen. Okay, that's, that's one name I can name. So I was glad to gr get this, decent, decent price. These next two I used to own and sold them or something, you know, and glad to get them back. One's in good shape. One, I wish it was in better shape, but it's like, I don't see it too much, so I grabbed it. But the first one, <clears throat> Lorca by Tim Buckley. I love Tim Buckley. Jeff Buckley's dad. He's the sound of his voice, but he was a musician. I mean, this album is very exploratory, experimental. It's very jazzy and ambient. And I really, for the life of me, you know, don't know why I sold this when I was going through that crazy period, but somehow I ended up not having it. So I got this. It's in real good condition, too. Um, so I think it's a, yeah, butterfly, butterfly. Tim Buckley, I have um, his main albums. They're just right up. Oh no, they're out in the other room. What a voice. He could play too. Really jazzy. The man's quite jazzy. And then this is the other one I used to have, and I'm not sure exactly why I sold it at all. And there's a couple of. You know, I really did go to a, through a period that I don't just don't know what was going on in my mind because I got rid of records that I really like. I mean, really like. I'm not sure. Anyway, Nate Ayers Big Chance, 1974, the album where, in many ways, Peter Hamill unknowingly predicts punk rock, the sound of punk rock with this album. Listen to this and you'll know what I mean. He's like being a do taking on an uh, alter ego for this album, Ricky Nadir, and there's a little backstory to the whole project, but it's great. It's, it's a Van de Graaff Jener generator um, rocking out really edgy it's, it's punk really good go a little further because I have some records out that I was playing I said for a bit there I was receiving records from this label capture records and some of them when they when they came to me just weren't hitting the spot and I'm coming back to these and it's like they're not hitting the spot much better but I get it Stoner Rock, Dreamtime. This one is called Dreamtime Sun. This is a reissue uh, on some cool looking vinyl. I'm gonna open it and show it. Um, it just kind of just kind of mop, mopes along. And um, I just, just decided to go with it and let it take me where it's going. Nice looking vinyl, huh? And uh, 
this is not the sort of thing that I'm much interested in listening to much of the time now, but um, I, I, um, I surrendered to it and got into it. Dreamtime Sun. I haven't played the other one that I still have of theirs. This is another reissue of their one of their albums. Maybe it's just called Dream Time. Isn't that nice? I think this is also on colored vinyl. I have to play this tonight. Yeah, pink vinyl. I, I really appreciate this stuff. And I will say, honestly, that there are many records and pieces of music that people will send me that it isn't until years later that it'll like, oh, now I get it, you know. And that's just how it can be a lot of the time, you know. Um, my first impression will be one thing, and then I'll come back to it, and it's like, oh, boy, I didn't hear this. Really enjoyed that. Pulled this to play, but I haven't played it yet. Michael Garrison, uh, Images, synth Synthesizer Music, uh, 1986. Um, independent releases. He has a couple, maybe three or four albums. I know I have at least a couple of these. Haven't played this in a while. One that I did play, and I don't think I showed it. I hope I didn't put it away. Yeah. This comes under New Age, or Ambient. Ambient's a better term for it. Don Slepian, Sonic Perfume, on the Audion label. This is magnifique. Sonic Perfume in particular, um, the piece, which is 16 minutes long. Um, he explains um, in detail here, because it's an early electronic piece and how he was able to, he had access to um, a computer uh, at Bell Telephone Laboratories back in 1977. This is totally cutting edge. It's just gorgeous. Sonic perfume. Tinkling, twinkling, cosmic. Fantastic. Don Slepian. Sonic Perfume. I've had this for a while. I just... I put it on after listening to... This was a poll where it's like I got this cheap and kept it. So I said, well, I don't remember what it was like. Uter. Tomorrow's Clowns on the um, Tiger Sushi label. Um, they do a cover of Om Sweet Om by Kraftwerk and um, you know as it got going it was like okay this better get better honestly that was my first impression it was like okay indie rock kind of like okay what are you doing you know where are you going and then it kind of starts to come together um I can see why I kept it, but it's like I, I would, wouldn't necessarily re recommend this unless that sounds like it's up your, your alley, what I just described. A couple more I played because it's been, it's been um, snowy, so I've just been staying at home rather than getting out there driving around. And um, haven't been, I finished the Dance Commission piece did a couple more new pe uh, pieces of music. One of them made the news lo locally. I uploaded it on SoundCloud. And a local music blogger, Tim McMahon on Lazy Eye. You, you local people know who he is. He blogged it and, and, and linked it. I, I'm, I'm, I love it because it's not what he usually goes for. He's, he's a big Saddle Creek type of um, booster. That's our connection. Anyway played this. This is a live concert or concert by Cluster 1972-77 put out by the Bureau B label in 2017. This stuff to me sounds like it could be, have been done today. It just buzzes with it a, a life of its own. This kind of music. It's why um. It's why I'm drawn to it. It really sustains me, and I really do get a lot of vitality from it. I, I love, I, I gotta keep stating this because um, 
a lot of people would think that I would be primarily into jazz or R&B and beats and funk and I love all that and I do but because of my life my life's path being a bit of a nerd type the middle child um, an outsider that's how I've always felt you know this is music that I identify with you know it has helped me to carve a ground of my own all my life to to mentally live in that feels right I mean all the other stuff is a part of my life you know but it's so close to me you know it's partly why I don't enjoy the blues very much at all um, but it also has to do with why I don't listen a lot to um, necessarily what you would consider mainstream um, music of any type you know because it reminds me and I'll be blunt it reminds me of my disappointment in you know where life is at you know life is cheap and just a lot of shit about people as much as I say I like people and love them there's a lot about what people do and are about that I can't stand you know so this music defines my reality in a lot of ways this is where I love it I love it played this French you Free Jazz, Kohelnik Ensemble. And uh, they make a point of, these are reissues of talking about how this music out of France, they started playing Free Jazz back in the 60s, not long after it got started in the 50s. And this stuff, um, yesterday I played the whole album because it was like, it just took a little bit for me to just let what they do the way they do it take hold because you can hear or rather I can hear that it's coming from a reference point of having heard American free jazz but it becomes its own thing well before the first side ends and it's quite good Jean Cohen is the saxophonist and he caught my ear. Souffle Continu Rec Records is the label that has been in recent years putting out some very, very interesting stuff, primarily from the French label Futura. I have no original Futura records. They're, uh, it's a hard label to find. We'll go a little bit longer here because uh, I have been playing these records. Played some of this Kit Watkins. He was in Happy the Man. Frames of Mine. This is an album that unfortunately suffers from the way that he uses the drum machine. It's very clunky and rigid. And he uh, uses the DMX drum machine. And it literally sounds like he's doing this. And thankfully there are a lot of compositions on here where he's not using it. His sense of melody and colors... I love them. I love his work and Happy the Man and Camel. And so there are redeeming qualities to this to this album. But the, this is one that suffers dated dated sounding drums badly. Stomo Yomashita's Red Buddha Buddha Theater. Um, he was a apparently a prodigy percussionist from Japan. Um, I guess when he was still a teenager he was a prodigy but um, he's made all kinds of music, and I did discover him before he made the Go album with, Stummel, with um, Steve Winwood and those guys. And uh, wonderful musician, yes, an amazing percussionist, but also composer. Um, I have his album that he made with Hugh Hopper. He had the East Wind Band. This is for some sort of theater. Oh, for a play, The Man from the East, and it's very oriental. Um, there's parts of it where you can hear that it's the soundtrack to what's happening on the stage and probably in the context of that it would work but on hearing it on the record it's kind of goofy but then there's other parts that are absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful side two in particular um, there's a flute thing shakuhachi or whatever that thing is 
it really sounds like we have left this period of time and we've gone back in time or we're just we're not in this time every time i play it it's that it's that strong it's beautiful yeah i love music i love the power of music i could go on i could go on i guess the other thing i'll say is i was talking about this brand new um release from rune and gramophone and i played it all the way through now a couple times in the arctic dream time this is fan freaking tastic ivar gridland and henry kaiser this is the shit brand new 2020 release it's 20 minutes i'm gonna get up here and hopefully it doesn't take but a few hours to load up <laughs> 